I am Kat and welcome to Kat's Creations where today I am working on a custom order for a very special client. Yeah. Had to turn my heater way down. Um, who saw a design I did in 2019 and wanted me to see if I could replicate it. And we're gonna do a little bit of a different spin on it because I like to make sure that every wreath a client has is truly an original just for them. So, before we go ahead and start, a couple things. If you want to get notified when I go live, two things. YouTube subscribers, just make sure you've subscribed to my channel. Then, whenever I get um, a new video tutorial uploaded, or if I go live, you'll be notified. Facebook followers, two-step process. So, make sure you're liking my page. Second, Make sure you're following my page. Can't tell you how many people tell me, I don't get your notifications anymore. And then I go and I look and I'm like, you're not following my page. You're not liking my page. This is why you're not getting notified. You have to have both. So like, and then click those three dots over to the right hand side of the like button and make sure you follow. When you do those three dots, it'll open up a sub menu and then you can simply click follow the page. Then, if you happen to have your phone on, you should be notified if you are available um, to get a notification. Otherwise, if it's just sitting and you're someplace else, well, obviously, that could be a reason too why you're not notified. Second thing, if you want to save this tutorial, for Facebook users, click the share button. It takes this tutorial from my page and shares it to your page where it's so much easier to find YouTube subscribers just go ahead and click the share button and you can share it to whatever folder you have set up. If you don't have folders, then they're just kind of like stacking up in your shared column, but those are some great things. Also, um, private group. We are doing some huge changes that are coming in May. So this is my recommendation for you guys to join now while the price is low so that when the new things roll around in May, you'll be able to benefit from them, but not have to pay the price increase in order to get them. And right now you get two for the price of one. So make sure you do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin my link to my website at the bottom. This wreath is not available for sale, but if you want something similar, just reach out to me at info at castcreationsandmore.com let me know you're interested and we can go ahead and negotiate what you guys would like to see, you know, me put together for you. Um, that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll go ahead and pivot you down. I had to wait for this lighthouse to come in because my original source for it was Shinoda Design Center, which is in the state of California. And if you guys have been following me for any long length of time, you know I don't live in California anymore. Um, so I did try to reach out to them and see if I could have one sent. So the email still has gone unresponded. So I just circumvented the process and we just ordered a totally new one for this client. Can't wait to show you. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me pin this really quick. Hi, Elizabeth. Good evening. Hi, Diane from Georgia. There we go. Pin to the bottom. So you guys have all the stuff. I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down. We might get rain from time to time. This is mean weird today. So we weren't supposed to have rain and we were not supposed to have hail, but we had both today. So go figure. Okay. So this is our lighthouse that we are putting in an oval grapevine. This is an 18 inch grapevine. I've already cleaned it. I spent the last hour cleaning, uh, de debriding it because it had pine branches, pine needles, and all kinds of stuff inside. Um, the lighthouse that I have here is an 18 inch light, 18 inch, 15 inch lighthouse. It does have a five inch round, not really a round. It's more like an ox, oxana, oxod however you pronounce that, uh, eight sided bottom to it. Um, but you can see it's super gorgeous. The other one I had was a little bit more plain. So this one's a little bit more elaborate. 
the first thing that I've done besides clean my grapevine is I have stapled my pipe cleaner to the top. This is where I'm going to attach the top to the um, grapevine. And I was firing up my glue, my glue gun and then it started raining and hailing. So I had to go get my jacket. Um, I'm going to just overemphasize and make sure that doesn't come off with the fact that it is that we are laying down the flat side to the bottom because that is going to be the flat side that rests up against the door. So we do need to find a way to attach it to the bottom, um, which we're going to do the same as we did to the top. We are simply going to add in to the bottom here, a little bit closer to the back, then the front, taking my staple gun, we're going to staple. Oop. Okay, come on. There's one. There's two. I'm going to go ahead and just double secure this to make sure this does not wriggle loose. I doubt it. But you just honestly never know. So I am doing this with the majority of the decor facing upward. I like the net. I like that I can see the starfish, the boat wheel, more starfish, the net. So that's what we're going to attach first. Hi, Julianne. Welcome. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to attach the top. So remember, I've attached that with a pipe cleaner. You could attach it using floral wire. I'm just going to run this down through the back. I want to make sure I can get that out so it'll lay nice and flat. Again, I'm trying to make sure too that I'm picking out some pretty big branches to make sure that I have that looped around. That's going to sit there. I want to make sure that I get it snug on the bottom. So, making sure I've got my flat bottom positioned first. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten this on the top. There we go. So, nice and tight. <clears throat> and you can do all kinds of things with these. I guess it would just depend on how elaborate you want to get. My customer had a budget, so we stayed inside his budget to kind of give him the things that he liked about the original design. And now we're going to attach the bottom the same way. I'm going to take a big chunk of our design and make sure that we've got a pretty good base for this. Again, making sure that I'm sitting that. I want to get this one. Hold on. I'm going to grab this one from this side. I didn't like where that was setting up. Yeah, I'm gonna move this back over. I'm trying to get it aligned where I want it to be, not where it wants to sit naturally, which is just slightly off center. Okay, there we go. This will help me pull it back into this side of things nice and snug. And so this will not be going anywhere. Okay. Nice and snug to the bottom. Oop. And then I'm going to run it through this extra piece of wood on the back. So that we are good. So this is what it looks like from the back. We've got this going around this big branch. So I'm trying to hook it around so we can get it knotted 
not only around the base. Okay, here, so I just got this one. Oh, Lord. I'm like, I should be able to reach that. Sometimes we just need needle nose to make the task so much easier. And then back and around. Okay, we are good to go. So making sure we've got flat bottom. Now we're going to start to create the design. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different. It's got a little bit of floral, but it's got a lot of ocean greenery. So you'll kind of see it's gonna have a bow that's gonna be right about here. So the first thing we're gonna do is green up our base. And so that is going to require some of this greenery, which is from Hobby Lobby. We're gonna take about four pieces of it. This is kind of like what's known as a cascading greenery. So it, it doesn't have any type of movement. It just kind of, it would be something that you would want that would fall over a design. So take about four pieces and we are going to set these up in a layered effect. So we're going to kind of start about up here and we are going to just make sure these pieces and I want them to cascade to where the bottom pieces just like just here, just the outside layer of the pieces are falling around the frame. So I have my glue gun on because sometimes it's just easier when we get it situated in there just to have our glue. I also have my glue skillet, which is just off screen. Okay, now we're gonna kind of come in here and I'm gonna go under this one, I think, just so I can pull some of these branches out. But we're gonna go back in to our base. Again, letting that fall just to the outside. I'm gonna use some binding wire. <clears throat> binding wire allows me to keep things where I want them to be without having to glue. So it looks just like the grapevine. So I'm gonna take this piece right here because I don't want it to fall completely off the base. And I'm gonna do it up in here as well. Now this binding wire you can get from Amazon. You can tell. Let's just work with this piece that we have here. This is gonna be your best friend when designing grapevines because you can basically just like place it around a couple of your grapevines like this and then they can kind of be a helping hand for you to lay your greenery in and then you just kind of twist and then it just lays in that spot. I keep going around my bottom. There we go. And again, moving a little bit closer. I'm gonna go right underneath here. We are just covering the bottom of this base. Let's move this off to the side. And I kind of want it to fall pretty much right there. I'll be about the farthest part I need it to be at. Okay. And then this one's going to go a little bit towards the bottom because we've got some transparency here at the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of overlap these a bit and kind of bring, well, we might go five on this one. So let's just take this up. I'm trying to bring this up to the base, but here's my binding wire again. So I haven't like secured it because I knew I was going to come in with some other pieces. So I can just kind of feather these around the edge. Take my wire. Make that work a little bit more. 
and then we'll cut those off when we get a little bit closer. Let's take one more piece. Um, some of these are short, so make sure you get a long one. That one's short, short, short. Here's a long one. There's my binding wire. Okay. So I'm just kind of filling, filling in the bottom. Okay, let's take another piece of this. But if I need a set of helping hands, like my binding wire does, I can just lay that right inside, go back up, twist that and then I'll just leave that there so this is what we have thus far ignore the wire so it's kind of like a sea grassy kind of look thing going on right now <clears throat> we're gonna thicken it up some more but that's just our first type of grass and then up here on the top we're gonna have like a wispy type of seagrass again Hobby Lobby for the win so I'm gonna cut probably about four pieces to start and these are going to go upwards I always say if you can go to Hobby Lobby and get their greenery while it's on sale that's going to definitely help you there so again here's where my bow's going so I'm going to make sure that this seagrass is under where my bow is so let's just go ahead and start sticking this in. There's that. I'm going to keep trying to pull this away. Now this allows you to only go up so far. So we don't want to go too far to make it look weird. We still want it to basically look like seagrass. Okay. Again, that's as high as it goes. I'm just evening these out, but then also freeing up some space for me on the inside. I'm trying not to push them, because if you push this way, then what it does is it, it pushes your granary down. So I'm trying really hard to only push at the top where that piece is. So we're going to come in here and lay that in right in here. Just like that. I will flip this around. I'll just keep showing you the looks that we're slowly achieving. I'm going to probably bring one more piece out to the side because I feel like it needs another out. Like out here a little bit just to beef that the um the outside look up okay push them all up Oop. there we go nice and handy again this is where our bow's going okay now down here on the bottom. First of all, I'm gonna check these out. I'm not sure. This may be the wrong color. I'm gonna pull these out. Where did I get these? I think these are greenery market. Or some more greenery. I don't want the grass. 
and we're also going to come in with some a lighter filler but let's go ahead see since these are so nice and we can break all these apart individually let's do that because I want them where I want to lay them okay so I'm going to come in here right underneath this and like I said this is where we're going to kind of thicken up our greenery a bit just give different dimension different texture kind of looking how they're all laying these are wired all the way down to the bottom which makes that nice we're going to kind of come in here like so just going to bend this so that it kind of falls in line with everything else Here's the other one. Kind of like that look. Okay, just like so. Again, if you need things to lay flat, you can use your binding wire, or because your stem is bent, you can definitely do that too. So like I said, I'm just bending if I want it to go in a different direction. Just like that. All right, let is, let's add our main florals, which are gonna be delphiniums. So delphiniums are going to kind of go up here at the top. Again, Hobby Lobby for the win. With the giant stem on it, which is just way bigger than anyone needs. So we're going to kind of come in here. Now I want my delphinian flowers to stay on the top like that. I don't want them to be on the back side. So we're going to kind of bring those up right about here. And let's see. We may just have to do binding wire. So let me lift these up so we can get a big bite. There we go, just like this. So this is what I'm saying you can do, is you can lay your florals right inside, like right where I want them to be. Let me pull that back. Oops, just like this. Snip this off, tuck that back in, and then if you want the flowers to stay where you want them to stay, I think I've moved that. should go up a little bit higher. Mm, good thing I didn't glue it, right? We just have binding wire holding it there. I want this up higher because we have our, um, our bow <laughs> we need to put in there. So again, go in here, take a big bite. We're gonna curve that so it just should fall. Should being the classic word. Oop. Right inside here. And I'm gonna pull a couple of these apart. I want them to go inside the wire 
where this does as well. Okay, pulling it down. Got to pull that one down too. Okay. Got to keep that reminder that I am. We have a bow coming in, so we can always bring more delphinium in where we need to. So there's that. We're going to add a piece to the bottom. Let's break these apart. So we're going to add some right in here. I'm trying to see what we have to work with. Even like I might have a branch. Yes. So we're going to add that there. We're going to strip these down a bit more. I think we're going to come in here is what I'm thinking as well. And we're going to come in and add more up here too. But let me go in and lay in my blue. These are dogwood. So we're going to separate these. There's four picks on each branch or four little branches. Sorry. So we are going to take these and these are getting layered in heavy on the bottom. So we're going to put these in. There's one. There is two. Again, they are wired to the tip. So if you need to adjust those, get those down where you want them to go. Kind of having that fall. Move these to the side. Lord knows we don't need a stick. That is a big stick. We're gonna go ahead and strip these down too. So it's kind of like a nice mix of like sand and sea florals. So again, layering the bottom and I'm just kind of like one in, one in between, one in, one in between. We are using a grand total of about three picks for this because this is going to accent the color of our lights house. go. Bring this one in. Okay, last one. Three, four picks. One, two, three, four. And those are done. Don't need to have those anymore. So, we will bring some in and under our delphinium. Just like so. We're coming up under, bringing these up. I think I feel like we need to have one look definitely here for sure love that look and it's also great when a customer reaches out to you and says hey I think this is you can you make one for me and you're like mm, yeah because I pretty much have the recipe for how we're going to put that together I'm going to hang on to this. We're going to slide this under once we get our bow in here. But let me spin this around so you can see what we have thus far. There we go. So far. Okay. We're going to spin it back around. And 
Ooh, that just feels super, super hot. I'm going to snip these. So my goal is to get this in while I can before we get too overly stuffy. So we're going to add that one like go right in here, kind of connect the two. So I have a little bit of a gap right in here that allows me to tuck that in. And like I said, all wired. Okay. This we're saving for our blue that are going to go into our bow. Whew. Okay. That was super, super hot. All right. Now we're going to add some of these adorable filler flowers. Again, from Hobby Lobby. Just to offset a light inner dark blue. There's that. That. We're going to tuck these in and around the bottom just to give it a, a nice contrast. If you don't need a stem that big, feel free to trim that down. I'm going to go kind of right in here. So we have those little feathered edge florals. Oops. Always check your flowers so that if you need to trim, you can trim. And I'm just going to kind of mix and match these in with our blue. So we have some light and dark contrast. What do you guys think so far? The greenery, Anna, came from Hobby Lobby. Um, the florals have all come from Hobby Lobby. I think, honestly, the majority of it is Hobby Lobby. And I'm just kind of weaving that in a bit. Trying to, that one I like, but how to get that in on a curve. Because I kind of want this one brushing up underneath. There's this big branch here. Just so we can kind of have a little bit of light and dark. I think I want to, I know we're going to come in here and add another one of these. Let me go ahead and do that real quick so I don't forget. I know it feels like we're not doing much with the top yet. Actually, the top does not honestly get that much because it's mostly all about being a... Um, look at that. Good thing we can recycle all this glue. And just throw it all back in the glue pot. Okay, let's create our bow really quick before I forget. And then we can go in. We'll add our last minute pieces and our finishing touches. Let me show you what it looks like thus far. Here we go. So far, that's what we're doing. It'll tie in nice once we add our bow in here. You'll kind of see. You're like, oh, okay, I see where it's going now. Okay, so our bow. I'm going to set this off to the side. And our bow is just two ribbons. It's very simple. It's not overly complex. We're going to start with a just a solid canvas. Let me make sure. I wanted to make sure it wasn't a splice. So these are going to be, I'm going to start with nine inches. I trimmed them down the last time to eight, but I'm going to see because every wreath is different. So we're doing nine inch tails and we're only doing four and a half inch loops. So this one already had the dovetail going. So I line up my bow dabra right on the 10 inch line so that when I go to pull these out, I want to stop 
right here at the four and a half inch line. And I'm gonna lay in that initial set of measurements that are very precise. So four and a half. And then we're going, we're doing four of each. So grand total of four beige and then four blue. So because we've already got the bottom ones measured, you can just put your finger in both hole, both holes and then pull. And then again, make sure you get this out. And this is nine inches. And then we're going to take our wired edges, bring those together. And we're gonna cut from the folded side to the wired point. That is our first ribbon. And this is from Kringle. I love having nothing but solids sometimes to work with. And then this geo print is from Burton and Burton. Again, it stays with that color theme of the blue. Surf sand in either clouds or the foam. We're still doing nine inches and still doing four, four and a half inch loops. So got that one down. Remember, we've already laid the beige down and those are already four and a half inches. So just put your finger in, pull up and over, pull. We're doing the second set. There we go. And then the last one. And this ribbon is from, like I said, Burton and Burton. And we need to measure out that nine inch tail and dovetail it. And we're fluffing on the wreath. But before we do that, we are going to add in some raffia to keep it a little bit beachy like the beach grass. So we are going to grab our raffia and we're going to make and add that to the top of our bow. Now my goal, hopefully, is that I have some longer pieces. Let's see. I may have to get my bigger roll out. These look like they're all thin so far. Oh, there's a big piece. Mm, not big piece. That's okay. No. Um, here's some along with that. I'm going to go ahead and shred this thicker end, which is just pull it apart and just shred it a bit. I'm going to take some of this wispy part of the grass. Like these. Don't want that though. Um, most of this other stuff is too short. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is we are just going to make a loop and then a loop. And then we're just going to lay that right in on the top. I'm going to grab beige pipe cleaner, kind of bend that. I'm going to pick up everything in here. We're going to put our pipe cleaner down and twist. We'll trim up this tail so once we get those on the wreath from the raffia. Okay, bringing this back over. We are going to Add our bow. And my goal is to get this to go through 
the wreath, not around, which is why I wanted to wait to get. There's one. And I'm just going to go around this one here. We're going to bring that down nice and snug. Nice and tight on the bottom. And now we're going to fluff. So we're going to pull our tails down. And there's one. Here's the other. And separate our loops. Separate these loops. Pull these down. Separate loops. Separate our loops. And then we'll just fluff our bow till we have obtained our desired look. I'm definitely going to be trimming a couple of these down just a bit, just so that they hang where I want them to go. We'll trim this one a little shorter so they match. I like the one out to the outside because those can be a little bit longer. Again, there's the look on our wreath thus far. Okay, now we are going to begin to embellish a bit. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, underneath here, remember how we said we're going to add our extra delphinium? We're going to come in here and add this. I might add this one up to the side. I think I will add this one to the side of my bow. So let me do this. I'm going to attempt. I have a really big branch. I've got to go under. But I think I've... There we go. It just took a little bit of manhandling. To get that in, fluff again. We'll pull all these wispy tails and we'll cut those so they're not quite so long. Get that to go around. like that. Lifting up. Now we'll put our blue pick in the lower half down under here. So we can have that added in and now we're going to start the fun embellishing part which is we are going to add, not with my wire, a little bit of these white tipped greenery. We're gonna, um, so I think they're more along the lines of like baby's breath. So we are just going to be popping these in just to add a little bit of lightness to a lot of that dark. Missed one, two. Sometimes they don't want to come off, and sometimes they do. There we go. If 
I need them to go in a little bit longer, we can do uh, floral picks. <coughs> but I generally just kind of soften them. Oop. Right in and around some of our floral. I love using these right on the edge. I really want this. We might have to binding wire that one to get it to stay in the place I want it to stay at. There's that. So just lightening up, adding some dimension, some light green, some white tipped baby's breath in here. Trying to get, there's the glue thread. Okay. So here is, we have a stubborn floral that won't stay where I want it to stay. Let me go ahead and get this baby's breath in first. And then we're going to use binding wire. Okay. And we're going to secure that in place. So here's that Bella's piece. I have this giant branch right here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. A couple wraps around it. Slip that off and twist that back around. And you would never know that we had any issues with getting that in place. Another one. So this is where it just gets so much easier rather than pulling just to snip them off at the base of that branch because that branch is a little too big to use and I like doing the detail work myself. So making sure you know those colors and the greenery pops where I want it to pop. Like just little soft touches and sometimes that's where I think the picks can get a little heavy-handed if we just use the picks in their entirety we don't get to come back in and add all those little subtle pieces where we want them to go again make sure you're eliminating glue threads as you can Now, if you ever get glue on any of your silk florals, wait till it dries and then pull it apart. It helps so much to be able to do it that way rather than try to pull it off when it's wet. Let it dry, then pull it apart. So I'm just kind of coming in and adding little pieces in, little pieces out. Take care to do the bottom. Uh, 
I want this to go the opposite way. There we go. And bring that back up. Nice and full, nice and fluffy. Okay, a couple things we are going to be adding. Um, I'm going to add a couple more of the beige delphiniums, bring it up a little bit higher. We're going to also increase the size of our grass. We're going to bring that up just a little bit higher. Should have done the one. Just a couple of these pieces. I just want to elongate that look a little bit further. So I got to go under the branch and we'll bring that up just a touch. Trying to get that one back on. One more piece. And then we'll bring some of the white tipped greenery up and around what we already have. I think I want this one in. So we'll bring, we might snip this, bring that up just a touch higher. Let me see what I think. If I want to just extend that. Oh, it looks so pretty though. Um, let me just kind of like that is where I'm going just to make it just slightly a little bit higher. So we've got to cover up the branch that's there, which means we're just going to go right in, pull these up and then we're going to thicken up the lower portion. So sometimes we can Add them where we want them to be. There's that one. I just want a few more right in here. There we go. And of course, I happen to pick the one with the price tag on it. See, like right in there. Like nothing, something. Nothing something. Thicken it up. Just like so. And let's take one section of our green. And this one's staying closer to the florals. It's staying away from the seagrass. So we're just going to add this up and around our delphinium. Let me flip this this way because I can do it upside down. There's that one. I think the last time I used Queen Anne's lace for this, we might go in and add just a couple touches <clears throat> of that. So 
so we're just boring and everything up. need to go at the bottom. I'm like looking right in here. And you didn't want to go in to your space. Now you will. Okay. There we go. One more. And we should be all set. All right. So far, what do you guys think? There's where we're at with the custom order so far. Again, I can't stress enough that when you send your custom order out, be meticulous in your quality control Make sure you've checked every inch of your design. Make sure you've pulled, as you'd be surprised sometimes at what your craft table picks up and totes around with you, like all this. It was just grabbing all the glue threads off my table and adding it to where I didn't want it to be. I'm just going to add in another delphinium right there because I felt like it needed it. So there we are so far. Final touches. We're going to add some ocean elements to this. So ready? Okay. We are, we're adding a, we're adding a, seashell which is going to go in right here our seashell is going to tuck in right here yes it is upside down and that's the way they wanted it we are going to add in a spiny starfish this is going to kind of get tucked in right about there and then we are going to add in our sand dollar and brightly colored um, starfish. So what I have done is if this did not lay flat, what I did is if there's any protruding pieces, I just made it so that it's flat. Like, I mean, anything that might keep that from laying completely flat. We're going to add our starfish or sand dollar here. So we're doing the whole back right in the center. Right in here. And we're going to lay that down. And we're going to hold it. This is probably the most critical part. Oh, you're welcome, Karen. She said, this is so beautiful. My friend loves the lighthouse. I live on the coast here. We have red and white lighthouses. How pretty in Biloxi. It gives me a great idea. Thank you for sharing your talents with us and happy day to you. Sorry I've been gone for a while. Broke my ankle, all three bones, and well, been healing and doing a lot of foot therapy. Aw, you have my Well, that's... just perfectly. So there's going to be one to the top and one slightly to the bottom like this. So believe it or not, they actually help anchor that uh, sand dollar in. So with that being said, I am going along the bottom, along the back, and I need to get this, there we go, back up on said sand dollar. And then the same thing, three arms, center, and then of course, right where I'm at. Okay. You're 
going to slide that in and we're going to nestle that on top. So see how those are sliding under the grapevine slightly? They're basically creating a little bit of a holder for this. So those are in. We're going to go ahead and take and we are going to glue all the way along here, all the way around our border, I believe. I think we should have a pretty good. I might even come in and tag just under that shell. But we're going to go right here, heavy on the glue on the front. We're going to tag down here at the bottom. I'm going to attempt to tuck that down and we're going to hold that until that dries. So this is the look you're kind of getting. It's kind of like a moon and stars, right? It's kind of like a sea, sea sunset on a grapevine, I guess. It's the look we're trying to achieve. And I love these because you can, you know, move them in whatever general direction you want. And then we'll glue our spiny starfish. Where did everything come from? Um, the large scallop shell, Hobby Lobby, I think you get a bag of them for a bag of six. And I have mine from a long time ago. I don't use them that often. So I still had quite a few left. Um, starfish are from, it was in a Kohl's indigo mist kit that allowed you to kind of throw all these things like in a seashell bowl and mix all your seashells. So sand dollar was from, um, Michael's, I believe. Looks like that's going to set up. And then we're going to add our star, spiny starfish. Again, lots of glue towards the center. That's where the majority of that is going to adhere to. In and around a little bit. There we go. He found a home. So he's just kind of in there. So it's kind of like these little seashell, the little surprises. But all in all, that is basically the design. So what do you guys think? So like I said, most of this came from locally sourced. So I don't want always, you know, like, oh, she got it from Craft Outlet. I can't get it too. No, you can get these all from your locally sourced craft stores. Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. And now that summer's like slowly approaching, um, you'll probably be able to find a lot more of these. At Hobby Lobby, wait till your florals go on sale. Then go pick them up. Get them at 40% off. It's so much easier than rather, you know, um, picking them up at full price. And then this way you can get a little bit more so that if you come up short, you can always go back in and add a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and pivot you up. We're going to put this on the door so you can see what it looks like. Hi, y'all. There we go. I'm going to take this one down. We're going to put that one up. So this is what it's stunning on that door. So this is black. So, and it's kind of interesting because there's a big branch that I can kind of, okay, that worked out weird. So there's this little knot in between how a branch curves around. And so there's just this little pinhole. So either A, you can put it on your, I don't know that you'd be able to get a hanger under there, but because I have a screw in my door, works perfect and it keeps everything balanced. But there you go. go. There is our ocean lighthouse. See, this is what I'm saying. These little things pick up everything as I was going around the board, picking up little glue threads here and there. Same thing here. Make sure you go around. You can take a hot blow dryer and blow dry the, you know, just blow dry everything along the top. But to 
if I did. I think I got it there. What do you guys think? I think it turned out good. Considering that was a five-year-old design that I did five years ago, right? Let me zoom you in so you can get that up close. So this tutorial will be available for replay um, as soon as we are finished with this live. I love the way everything just kind of falls together. Um, any other questions that you guys might have that I can answer for you before we go live? Or before we go, before we go. So thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth said beautiful. Carol says pretty. Um, so yes, this just shows you something totally different you can do without a sign and uh, create something wonderful for somebody. And like I said, always share your old designs because honestly, you never know um, who's looking at your pictures and where are they finding them. So this is just another one of those classic examples of post, 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 so that somebody will eventually come along, spot that, and be like, oh, I went to her shop. I went to her Etsy shop's not there. Did it sell out? Um, and then they reach out and contact you. So there you guys go. Thank you. Hope you guys will come back Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, which is 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. We're making something else to kind of go with the theme for summer of 2024. So I hope you guys will come back for that. All right. Thanks for joining me and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.